Uh, doctor, if you'd like to come up, I'd like to give you a chance to, uh, to say a few words. Thank you for coming. Thank you. I'll be quick. Uh, Representative John Adams. Uh, you know, I've heard a lot, pros and cons. Uh, it is our duty. It's our duty to see to it that uh, this bill passes in the House, gets out of committee and passes in the House. As a representative, it's our duty to make sure we represent our constituents, as uh, Mr. Watchman said, and that is what we're going to do. And uh, I'm just so, I'm just glad to be here. I'm glad to be working with uh, Lynn Watchman, and uh, it, it, it's going to happen. I feel positive this is going to happen. Thank you. Representative Terry Johnson, 89th District. Um, this is a bill that is strongly supported by my uh, home constituents. Uh, the Sioux County Right to Life uh, stand uniform in their support of the bill. Uh, I'm an osteopathic physician, and I took an osteopathic oath uh, when I began practicing medicine. In that oath, I swore to protect life, and uh, I take that very seriously. Uh, those that are helpless, the elderly, and the unborn, I think, are the most vulnerable. And uh, of course, this bill addresses uh, the unborn. Uh, taking care of ladies who are uh, uh, pregnant. Uh, I listen to fetal heart tones. Uh, you know, I, I deliver babies. I actually have experience uh, with that aspect of it. Uh, I will stand firm in my support of the sanctity of life. Uh, this bill does a great job of that. Uh, and as far as, you know, whether this bill has a chance of becoming a law, and whether or not, when it's a law, whether it will be struck down or not, I could care less. This is the right thing to do, and I'm 100% behind it, and I'm proud to stand with these good people. My name's uh, Representative Danny Buff. I represent the 88th House District, Adams, Brown, and Claremont County. And I'll tell you, it's great to be here today. You know, uh, there are other issues that are going on here in this State House. A lot of folks up here visiting and uh, voicing their concerns with legislation and so forth, but I couldn't be prouder to be in this room with all these uh, individuals, great Americans that care about their country and care about life. And I think if you go back to our founding fathers, uh, all through the history of this nation, uh, there have been people that went before that have said, you know what, the most important thing is life. And uh, it's good to be here. Good to share with all these folks, and I'm just honored that uh, Lynn Watchman, uh, despite a lot of the uh, verbal abuse and, uh, and uh, uh, adversaries against him, came forward with this bill and uh, is moving the ball down the field, so to speak. And I'm not worried about the uh, concerns of constitutionality. There are folks been looked at this, and uh, they are uh, okay with it, and whatever we do, I think God would be pleased that we're trying to uh, save lives. And if we save one life as a result of our efforts here today, I'm uh, glad to be a part of it. What we can do is work our way over from, from the right side. Where we want to come. Sure. Linda, is, and I'm not a steal or thunder, but she's actually one of four past presidents of Ohio Right to Life who supports the heartbeat bill. Uh, it's been in the movement since the, uh, the 70s, and we're glad to have you. We'll just, we'll just work our way around. Yeah. Thank you. And then so we'll much. take questions. Thanks so much. I just want to just express my gratitude to everybody who's here. Uh, we are a whole pile of people from Northwest Ohio and proud of all of them. Lots of them have been working in this movement for a long time. Uh, I got the call in the mid-70s from Dr. Jack Wilkie, who heard that I was doing a few of his presentations in the high schools um, and with some of the, um, the, the teachers in our area. I got a call saying, Linda, do you think that you would like to be on the Ohio Right to Life Board? And I thought, I, I don't know. You know, I was in my mid-20s, I had one child, and I made my way during the winter time um, down to Zanesville for my first Right to Life meeting and met with Dr. Jack Wilkie. I was, I was just sold the moment I got there. Dr. Wilkie sat down with my husband and I and said, you know, Linda, do you think that you and your husband would be willing to spend about 10 years working on this issue? Because if we can give it 10 years, we should be able to turn this around. And my husband and I in our 20s thought, 10 years, are you kidding me? 10 years is a long time. But we sat back and thought, you know, it would be worth the effort, so let's, let's go for it. And we did. And the 10 years went by, and 20, and 30, and we're getting close to 40. 
And for the first time, the first time with all the legislation that we have passed in the state of Ohio, this is the very first time that we are going to attend to stopping the killing of the babies. This is an awesome time for us. And so I would just say thank you so much for being here because we are offering to our United States Supreme Court an engraved invitation to overturn Roe, and I am privileged to be a part of it. Thank you so much. I'm Elaine Moore from New York, Ohio, Northwest Ohio, and I'm unified in the heartbeat bill, and I kind of have two surprise grandchildren, and you know, thank God they're here because it's a blessing. My name is Christy Ressler. I'm 18 years old and a senior in high school, and I'm the president of the Foster Area Teens for Life, and I'm also representing the Foster Area Right to Life, and I'm here to essentially say that we stand united behind the heartbeat bill. My name is Dave Banzak. I'm the Education Director for Clark County Right to Life. I'm a retired engineer and currently an adjunct professor at Clark State Community College. But most importantly, I'm known as Pat's husband, Pat Banzak. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we back uh, House Bill 78, House Bill 79, and House Bill 63. And also we back House Bill 125, the heartbeat bill. As stated by former Archbishop Daniel Clark this weekend, Anything that limits the destruction of life, I'm for. I agree with this statement. The vote for House Bill 125 is a pro-life vote. Let the unborn speak with their hearts. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Joe Weiner. I'm a retired engineer. And I see uh, over here that we have Exhibit A. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, Ohioans are compassionate people. Let anyone see somebody in an accident that still has a heart, and we call 911 and rescue people out to rescue them. I ask that we extend this further to the womb so that the little babies can see and feel and be in God's good earth. Uh, I also want to say that anybody who is here or away should go up to their mother and father and say to them, thank you, mom and dad, for having me. Thank you. My name is Julie Busby. I am a board member of Ohio Right to Life, and I strongly support the heartbeat bill, along with other Ohio Right to Life board members. Um, as has been mentioned, Dr. Wilkie, one of the founders of the National Right to Life movement. Um, this bill alone, if passed, according to Ohio Department of Health uh, statistics from 2008 on abortions, would save 26,000 lives alone just in this state, and I think that's something that everybody can get behind. Thank you. I'm Marsha Holman, and I represent Ask of Life, which has been around since 74, so we've been in it for a long haul, too, and we stand behind the heartbeat bill. I'm Nuri Moss. I'm from Finley, Ohio. I've been president of Ohio Right to Life Political Action Committee in the past, and currently an active member of the Political Action Committee here in Columbus. I am an RN, graduated from Grand Hospital School of Nursing for a few years ago. Uh, I am also a uh, founding member and president of the Women's Resource Center in Finley, Ohio, which is a women's uh, pregnancy center uh, for unplanned pregnancies. Uh, I am an RN and I'm a, I'm a hospice RN. And I just ask right now that um, we, we're showing a united front for this heartbeat bill. As I expressed in my testimony a couple of weeks ago, being a hospice nurse, I see patients die nearly daily, and that is determined by the absence of a heartbeat. And I just plead to, plead to the legislatures that we at least bestow life when the heartbeat can be detected. And we just want to stand here and show unity for that. Thank you. Uh, Representative, uh, you've got like 50 legislative co-sponsors. Excuse me, you can say your name and your name. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm Karen Castle from Ohio Public Radio TV. You, 
you've got like 50 legislative co-sponsors of this. Why does this not move if you've got the majority of the House who say they want to co-sponsor this? Well, the bill is moving through the process. For those of you who know anything about the committees, when I am uh, privileged to be chairman of committees, I uh, run thorough committees, uh, allow a lot of debate, a lot of discussion. Uh, the heartbeat bill is no different, so uh, it, it is common for me to put bills up for possible vote, not necessarily take a vote on a given week. So if you look at the history of, of my uh, being chairman of various committees, you see a pretty consistent history of, uh, as I tell uh, some of the more liberal friends on my committee, uh, I'm, I'm kind of big on free speech. So there's nobody in, say, the leadership or a governor's office who's told you maybe this is not the right time for this bill? No. Look, uh, there, there's some uh, nervousness among the crowd uh, when you have uh, the Ohio Right to Life out working against your legislation. Uh, um, it's very unfortunate. Uh, they're wrong and we're right. Uh, this bill is, is about protecting the lives of unborn babies. Uh, that's what we should all be in the business of doing. I'd like to know if you have a vote, you're scheduled for, I'm sorry, Bill, you're scheduled for a vote tomorrow. Do you anticipate any amendments and do you anticipate a vote tomorrow? I do anticipate a vote tomorrow. Uh, as of right now, my plan is to offer a substitute bill. We have a number of, of, of changes. I, I would guess that the Democrats will have numerous amendments to, uh, in one way, shape, or form, get the bill. Can I follow? Sure. Up? Um, what would, what do you think needs to change about the bill? What, what are you proposing that changes in the bill? Well, one, one of the uh, big issues, we, we again, as I stated earlier uh, when I spoke, we've got some of the the greatest uh, lawyer of mine working on this bill. Uh, there, there is some, I think, some need to recraft some of the language on the uh, uh, exception for the life of the mother, so we have a, a better chance on the constitutionality of the issue. Did you say when you may have answered this? Has there been pressure on you not to take a vote in the committee and to just put this aside? No. No. So last week, delay was just what you said, which often happens in your committee. Sometimes you don't, you say possible vote, but right. that means. Right. Yeah, we, we were, um, again, a week ago, we were working diligently to craft some, some new language. That, and, and again, tomorrow the committee will see a substitute bill to come forward. At least I think that's how we're going to handle the first and more amendments. But the heart of the bill, so to speak, would be the same. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Well, Jan, if I need to speak to that, I, I uh, have always been, uh, you know, when I served in the Senate, uh, I worried about what happens in the Senate when I served in the House. I worry about what happens in the House. I, I mean, that's true. Uh, you know, I, I, there are going to be some strong supporters. There's going to be some, uh, I think, senators that uh, are, are going to tend to listen more to how right to life, uh, be opposed. But uh, right now, I am optimistic that we can get this bill through the legislature. If I may just add to that. In meeting with those in the Senate, uh, essentially, every, all eyes are on the House. And when people say, you know, I'm just not sure it's going to pass in the House, they, well, it doesn't take a mathematician to count to 50. Uh, there are 50 co-sponsors. Because of Lynn's leadership, because of the content of the bill, because of the widespread support, not just in the legislature, but in the grassroots, I think it's very important that you all just not just saw the list, but that this list represents real people with beating hearts. And uh, those beating hearts uh, are going to be safer as those children uh, are going to be protected very soon. And I think that this, this uh, wave of support, the momentum is going to carry this through all the way to the governor's uh, desk, and we fully expect a signature so that children will be safer and Ohio can once again lead. Have you 